Mr. Donahue here again. Let's take a look at some practice problems for formula weights and the mole. All right, so let's get started. The formula for nitrobenzene is this, C6H5NO2. What is its molecular weight? So it, it's always going to be helpful to set your work up nice and neat. So I'm just going to go carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, and oxygen. So you want to figure out what is the mass from each of those elements and then add them all together to get the molecular weight, the weight of the molecule. So carbons, well, I got six of them. So I got to look up what is the mass of each carbon, and it's 12.01 grams per mole, which tells me that I have 72.06 grams per mole from just the carbon. So now I do the same process for hydrogen. There's five hydrogen. The molecular mass for hydrogen is 1.01 .01 grams per mole, which gives me 5.2. 0.5 grams per mole from just the hydrogen. Nitrogen, there's only one, so I'm just going to cheat, and it's 14.01 grams per mole. And then oxygen, well, there's two of them times the mass of each oxygen, which is 16.00 grams per mole, which gives me 32.00 grams per mole. And now you add all those together. And when you do that, you get 123.12 grams per mole. Or you could have also used atomic mass units or AMU. So there you go. That's how you do that one. What is the percent mass of hydrogen in methane? All right. Well, to figure this one out, you know, percent mass or percent by mass is going to equal the mass of your part, in this case hydrogen, over the mass of the whole thing, in this case CH4. So I got to figure out what is the mass of CH4. Well, carbon, there's only one of them, so I get 12.01 grams per mole. I just looked that up. Hydrogen, well, there's four of them, and each of them is 1.01 .01 grams per mole. So I end up with 4.04 .04 grams per mole which means when I add those together, I get 16.05 grams per mole as my total mass. So if I want the percent of hydrogen, I go, what is the mass from all the hydrogen? All of the hydrogen have a mass of 4.04 .04 grams per mole divided by the whole thing, 16.05 grams per mole. And because we're dealing with the percent, now you times it by 100. I forgot to say that here. <laughs> Oops. So you times it by 100 and you get 25.17% when you round to the proper number. Oh, that's not the proper number of sig figs. Proper number of sig figs would be 25.2%, right? Because we got, all right, so there you go. Three, one mole of which of the following compounds has the largest number of atoms? Largest number of atoms. So they're saying we have one mole of each of the compounds. So you really want to look at which compounds are made up of the most atoms. So here are our options. Well, oh, th this is how they're trying to get you. All right. So I got two aluminum. That's pretty straightforward. I have SO4, but I have three of them. So it's really saying I have three sulfurs, and I have 12 oxygen plus the two aluminums, which gives me a total of, what, 17? I think. Did I do that right? Yeah, I did. Cool. Yay. So S subscript 8 is just eight atoms. Cl2 is just those two atoms. Na3PO4, well, I have three sodium, I have one phosphorus, and I have four oxygen. So when I add those together, I get eight. And then C10H8, I have 18 atoms total. So the one with the largest number of atoms is going to be choice E. All right, so what is the percent by mass of carbon in dimethyl sulfoxide to three significant figures? So again, percent mass or percent by mass is going to be equal to the mass of the part over the mass of the whole thing times 100. So I got to figure out what is the formula mass for dimethyl sulfoxide. So let me take a look. Carbons, I got two of them. They're each 12.01. So I end up with 24.02 
grams per mole. Hydrogens, there are six of them, each with a mass of 1.01 grams per mole. Where are you getting these numbers, Mr. Groney? I'm looking them up on the periodic table. And I'm taking them to two decimal places. So I end up with 6.06 .06 grams per mole. Sulfur is just the one, so I looked that one up, and it's 32.07 grams per mole. And then oxygen, again, it's just the one. I look it up, it's 16.00 grams per mole. So when I add all those together, I get 78.15 grams per mole for the whole molecule, right? So going back to this math, that's going to be my denominator, 78.15 grams per mole. All right, well, what are they asking about for carbon? So carbon, it's not the mass of just one carbon. It's the mass of all of the carbons. So all of the carbons in that molecule have a mass of 24.02 grams per mole. Times that by 100, and you get the answer. To three sig figs is going to be 30.7%. percent Five, one million argon atoms is how many moles? Rounded to two significant figures of argon atoms. All right, well, one million, I'm going to be lazy here, and I'm just going to write 10 to the 6 atoms is how many moles? Well, I know one mole is this Avogadro's number, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd parts, whether it be molecules or atoms, it's whatever we're talking about. So one mole is that. All right, if I'm trying to end up with moles and I'm trying to cancel out atoms, I'm going to have to put atoms on the bottom. So 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms is on the bottom. And depending on what calculator you're using, definitely need to make sure you put that part in parentheses. And then one mole goes up top. So now I do 1 million times 1 mole divided by 6.022 times 10 to 23 atoms. And I get to 2 sig phase 1.7 times 10 to the minus 18 moles. Which is not very much. It's not even 1. It's 10 to the minus 18. So even if you had a million atoms, you're not even getting close to having a mole. 6. How many molecules are in 48.2 grams of CH4? Oof. All right, well, they give me grams. From grams, I can get moles. All right, how is that going to help me? Because if I know Avogadro's number, I can go from moles to molecules. So let's figure that out. In order to go from grams to moles, I need to know the gram formula mass. So let me figure that out for CH4. Carbon, there's just one, so it's 12.01. I looked it up. Hydrogen, there's four of them, times it by 1.01. And I get 4.04 .04 grams per mole. And when I add those together, that'll give me the GFM for CH4. I get 16.05 grams per mole. So let me start. I got 48.2 grams times, well, I need to cancel out grams. So let me put grams on the bottom. So I get 16.05 grams on the bottom and one mole up top. So now my grams will cancel out. Now I have moles. Now let me plug in Avogadro's number. I know I need to cancel out moles, so I put one mole on the bottom. And I'm going to have to put 6.022 times 10 to 23rd molecules up top. Moles cancel out, and now I'm left with the unit molecules. I know I've set it up right. So when I plug and chug all of that, I get oops, 1.2. 81 times 10 to 24 molecules. It's a whole lot of molecules. Tell you what. 7. 30.5 grams of glucose contain how many atoms of carbon? Ooh, we want just atoms of carbon. They give me grams. They give me a formula. So I know I'm going to have to figure out the GFM to start. So let me start there. I got carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. I got 6 carbons, each at 12.01. I look that up and I get 72.06 grams per mole. Hydrogen, well, there's 12 of them. Each has a mass of 1.01 .01 grams per mole, so I end up with 12.12 .12 grams per mole. Now oxygen, 
There's six of them, each with a mass of 16.00 grams per mole, and I end up with 96.00 grams per mole. So when I add all those together, I end up with 180.18 grams per mole of glucose. So let me do a little, uh, what do I call that, dimensional analysis. So I got 30.5 grams times by, I'm going to need this gram formula mass. And if I need to cancel grams out, I got to put grams on the bottom. 180.18 grams per one mole of glucose, C6H12O6. Now I got moles of glucose. Well, now what do I got to do? I'm trying to get how many carbon atoms. Well, I know for one mole of glucose, there is going to be six moles of carbon atoms, right? Because it's C6. For every one molecule, I have six carbon atoms. So now I'm left with moles of carbon atoms. Now I need to use that Avogadro's number. So I got one mole on the bottom to cancel out moles, and then Avogadro's number up top. 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. Moles cancel out, and when I plug and chug all that, I get, I'm going to write it up here, 6.12 times 10 to 23rd atoms of carbon. Eight, what is the mass in grams of that many atoms of sodium? All right, well, first I need to look up what is, well, yeah, I'm going to go from atoms. I'm going to get moles from that, and then I'm going to convert moles to grams. So I have 9.76 times 10 to the 12th atoms of sodium. I'm going to times that by, well, all right, if I need to cancel all atoms, I got to put atoms on the bottom. So I use Avogadro's number, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms is one mole. And now I'm going to have to times it by the GFM. So I, I look up sodium. I know one mole of sodium is 22.99 grams. So let's see. Atoms of sodium cancels out with atoms. Moles cancels out with moles. I'm left with just grams. So now I pick up my calculator and I plug and chug and I get 3.73 times 10 to the minus 10 grams. So not a whole lot. Even though that's a big number of atoms, each atom is tiny. Nine. These problems just keep coming. 45 grams of C2H2O2 has how many grams of oxygen in it? All right, there's a couple of ways that you can do this. Um, you can go, hey, let me get the GFM of that, and then let me convert 45 grams to moles, and then get moles of oxygen, so that I can convert that and get grams of oxygen. But I'm going to do something different. First step is still going to be figure out the GFM. So I got C, H, and O. Carbons, there's two of them. Each is 12.01. Gives me 24.02. Hydrogens, two of them as well. Each with a mass of 1.01. .01, gives me a mass of 2.02. .02. Oxygens, there's also two with a mass of 16.00 each, which gives me a total of 32.00. From just oxygen, I add them all together, and I get 58.04 grams per mole. So what I could do, and this is what I'm going to do, show you a little trick. Uh, if it's want, wanting you to compare C2H2O2 to just oxygen, you can go, all right, well, if I had one mole of C2H2O2, I have, where is it? 58.04 grams. And of that, how much is oxygen? Well, I looked, I did that math already. 32 grams of it is oxygen. So if I had 45 grams of C2H2O2, 
How much of that's going to be oxygen? You already know the proportion based on, you know, the gram fulmium mass of the compound as well as how much of it was oxygen. So you can just do a ratio and you cross multiply and divide and you get 25 grams of oxygen. You could do it this way, but it's definitely going to be longer. Cool, that's it. Hope you found it helpful. Okay, bye.